Hello and welcome to the Science Fairy. In this video I will show you how to build a simple Tesla coil that can produce quite big arcs. The Tesla coil can run on 31 volts DC which produces smaller arcs or on 48 volts AC for bigger arcs. This is the circuit diagram. The circuit is pretty simple but you need to be careful with the component choice to get it to work. I started by making the circuit board by gluing small pieces on a base plate. You don't have to do this this way, but I found it easier to repair. Soldered together it looks like this. The positive wire is on the first piece and the negative wire is soldered on the base plate. From the positive side to ground I soldered a 220 nanofarad 600 volt film capacitor. After that there are two P600M diodes in parallel to the next pad and from there there is a 4.7 microfarad capacitor to ground. I initially thought that I can use a ceramic, however they broke pretty fast so it's important to use a film capacitor there as well. I used a 630 volt capacitor. After that it goes over a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor to a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer that is connected to ground and the other lead goes to a 2.2 ohm resistor that's connected to the gate of the MOSFET. From the gate you solder a 100 nanofarad capacitor over a 22 ohm resistor to ground. Here you can apparently use a ceramic capacitor. I used one with a voltage rating of 100 volts. The source of the MOSFET is connected to ground and from gate to source there are two 6.8 nanofarad 2 kV capacitors in series. Here I also used ceramic at first but they got warm so I switched to film capacitors. The primary coil then gets connected to the pad with the diodes and drain of the MOSFET. The end of the secondary coil gets connected to the gate. For the coil itself I used the old one from my spark gap tester coil video but if you want to make a new one it should be 6.3 cm in diameter, 13.5 cm high and with 500 windings of 0.25 mm wire. The original coil had a so called top load that acts as a capacitor to form a resonant circuit with the coil. However, my frequency was a bit low, so I removed that, but that seemed to not affect the frequency. The primary coil should have two windings with thick wire, but three windings worked better for me. Between the primary and secondary coil I had one centimeter of epoxy resin for isolation, however I'm not really sure if this is really necessary. Also the primary should be as close to the secondary as possible to have the most energy transfer. Before you connect the circuit to a power supply it's important that you turn the potentiometer to the right so the gate has no voltage yet. Only then you can connect the tester coil to either 31 volts DC or 48 volts AC. After that you slowly turn the potentiometer to the left side until you see the arcs. At 31 volts DC it should draw a current of 10 amps and at 48 volts 7 amps. To have the AC voltage I actually used a welder. It has only 40 volts but that's what I had on hand. You can touch the arcs with your hand, the current is very low, however you can burn yourself. Also when I tried it with a hammer at 48 volts the MOSFET actually broke, but that could be because there is no current limit with the welder. But you can do all the other stuff you can do with the Tesla coil. 
I hope you liked this video. If yes, then definitely subscribe for more science projects. And I will see you next time. Bye.